TTC is at the 2024 Japanese Grand Prix. We find ourselves fortunate enough to cross the Pacific this time with one goal in mind. Take a closer look at the tools F1 teams use that might match some of what you use at home, and at why those tools are increasingly leaving out cordless impact guns, especially around pit lane. Formula 2 and even Formula E both use cordless wheel guns these days, so by poking around with paddock passes, we've taken a closer look at why and even found ourselves able to show you today with our own testing one of those battery guns used in Formula 2 to see what sort of stopwatch difference there would be if F1 switched to electrical pixie power as well as high-speed footage inside how the hammer mechanism on an F1 wheel gun works. So we're all on board with this, right? This is not so that we could write off traveling to the Japanese Grand Prix as a channel expense, it's, it's for science. Starting around the pit garages with tools you yourself might own, or at least can buy, and photography isn't allowed in the paddock, so we're going to be using the best clips we could find on screen here. We're going to start off with Snap-on. When it comes to hand tools, Snap-on seems to be a constant among most teams. Over at Red Bull, it's all over the place. Aston likes their snappy, Alpine as well. Mercedes is the only ones we spotted using comfort grip, but standard polish handles were used as well, especially ratchets, I guess, for Snap-on, by far the most common seen brand. We did see other hand tools used, like Bondus T-handles, Kennedy T-handles, never heard of that, but based out of England, which I guess makes sense for this Aston Martin team, Vera screwdrivers and wrenches with that Red Bull partnership, and MaxiFlex gloves. But even when it comes to power tools, you'll see Snap-on again. They're found globally and probably somewhat easy to swap out on location. Saw more than one CT861 38s impact wrench, like in the Red Bull garage here. We found this CT861 to perform decently well when it comes to power, but the speed and control of it are some of the best around. Small, light, nimble, rockered forward reverse switch makes for quick work on small fasteners. This probably means better speed and less mistakes for F1 mechanics. Now there are more powerful impact wrenches even in 3.8s, but realistically, you're lucky to see an impact used on these carbon fiber cars at all. Despite what McLaren's promo footage might imply here, an impact driver like this DCF 850 and even a full-size cordless drill shown here in their McLaren edition DeWalt garb rarely ever touch an F1 car in the factory or down pit lane. Instead, you'll see, like we did last year, a lot of installation drivers and clutch-type screwdrivers like the DCF601. Clutch controllable to limit power and yet hex shank call it for quick attachments and less space taken up compared to a drill chart. This DeWalt footage shouldn't be a surprise. DeWalt is again this year a main sponsor of the McLaren F1 team, which means you'll see a whole lot of yellow in their garage and nowhere else on the paddock. But that does mean there's a very good chance you may already own one of their most used cordless tools, this year being basically exclusively DeWalt 20 volt DCBL 722 leaf blowers. Every team uses blowers to cool down the brakes, engine, and power unit, and this $130 leaf blower works over time with a 15 amp hour battery on each tool. A $400 battery that we found to be quite large and spicy and should make for the most runtime of any team on the grid to our measure. The six used here for all the air inlets accounts for $2,400 in batteries alone, so hopefully with the cost cap, they're getting these for free as a marketing partnership and not buying them. And no, you won't find a single fallen leaf up and down the grid though, as they all use these things. Some new models like Mercedes, their new partnership with Einhell, a European cordless tool brand we'd do well to try and find, to test some. But sure enough, new Einhell cordless blowers and batteries, Einhell drill drivers, and even Einhell heat guns decorating the AMG Petronas garages this year. You'll also find Ego, that outdoor power equipment brand, wearing RB colors this year after their change from Alpha Tauri. Not a sponsorship, we believe. So you see the team's colors, not Ego's, though that would be a pretty cool pairing with Kick Sauber and their crazy green color scheme this year. But no, wrapping up the very exciting air blowing tools category this year, you have the ever constant Makita 18 volt LXT. Most of them the dual battery 36 volt models, but some the single LXT as well. You'll find lots of new and different paint jobs, but still king and found in every other team's garage, save for some custom blower models, maybe like Alpine that make their own. And even then, those still use two Makita batteries in parallel. Those things look pretty cool too. Makita is just simply universally available around the world, easy to replace quickly and cheaply, which is why you see them using five amp hour packs instead of their max made six amp hour, just plentiful products and it makes logistics easy. So what about the good old fashioned rattle gun? Everything we've been talking about so far is about access, small size, low controllable power, logistically easy and replaceable. The Paoli F1 pit gun is the opposite of all those things. Expensive, hard to set up, 
dedicated high-pressure air system, cumbersome hoses around 12 guys working on a car, and yet still at the top of motorsports during pit stops, so we aim to find out what the gap is between today's top cordless and old-fashioned air guns. Formula One uses this, the Italian-made Paoli Hurricane 2.0, which costs around $10,000 retail, up to $15,000 with the bells and whistles attached, and outfitted by teams with custom proprietary changes, modes, software, up to the tune of twenty dollars to $30,000 Per wheel gun, and it needs a full R and R every three to five races. But for that, you get a 3,100 to 3,200 foot-pound gun. Usually, this one because guys are either dedicated left hand or right hand removal. 15,000 RPM and run off of 360 psi of nitrogen up to 450 psi for some tailored models. F1 uses a captured nut that keeps inside the wheel and it's threaded right-hand threads for one side of the car and left-hand threads for the other side of the car. And that's so that braking and other forces of the car only tighten the center wheel nut and not loosen it. Those forces are great enough that instead of soapy water as lubrication we'd normally use to help put the tire onto the rim, they instead use a liquid adhesive that starts out wet, aiding that tire installation onto the magnesium wheel, then cures physically bonding the tire to the rim, sort of like bead locks for drag racing, but no extra added weight. Otherwise, the install and even balancing process of an F1 slick is pretty similar to how your road tires are installed. Some more heat resistant balancing weight adhesive and then they put foil tape over those, but they even have these FIA approved TPMS sensors to monitor tire pressures, which is much like what your car would have. Back to impacts, the cordless models the F1 grid use, and they do use them, is the Milwaukee M18 2867 one inch drive pistol impact wrench. The specs on this gun are 15 to 1800 foot pounds, and 1650 RPM. The thing is, we've been seeing less and less of this model used around garages on the grid compared to the last two years. Now, traditionally, these were used in the garages to fasten wheels when not in a hurry in a cordless, lower volume, less high stakes way. It's easier to make mistakes at 10 times the RPM. But this year, we're seeing a lot more guys start the threads by hand than send it home with the Paoli gun. So two things, why isn't this used for pit stops? Well, RPM for one. For another, we've only been able to get the tool's peak specs in forward. This gun is very underdriven in reverse, which is pretty important for a pit stop. The center nut is tighter after heating up and being driven on, requiring more torque to remove than fasten. So not ideal in this tool's case. Second, and this one maybe is just a coincidence, but in F2, a body that uses all cordless wheel guns, they had a double stacking pit stop incident last season that led to a double wheel departure. The stops between the team's two cars were so close, the program settings on the gun hadn't reset to show green for go. So they sort of just felt it out with the Ugga Duggas like you and I might. Not a shining recommendation for the cordless wheel guns in their current state. Now it is changing all the time, but currently or most recently, the model of impact used in the lower formulas has been the Paoli Typhoon, a 1180 foot pound, 1650 RPM cordless impact wrench. Now you can buy one of their Gen 1 versions for a cool 960 bucks, but this looked familiar to us being folks that live and breathe impacts. Techway out of Taiwan, yeah, they make this thing. And Techway, as it turns out, have an exclusive deal with Matco Tools in the US, so you can buy one of their Gen 2 Typhoons from Matco for well, yeah, it's still pricey, but 150 bucks less. Same RPM and most of the specs as the F2 gun. And that's this. We got one here. Same U-turn raised loop design on the body. Same angled grip, which leads to an angled head. Even has some of the board mode selections blanked out here on the Mako, which the Typhoon has. Well, the latest Gen 2 Typhoons have torque indicators, grip tape, more gadgets. But otherwise, the service parts, they look to be the same. So let's put a stopwatch to these things, F1 versus F2 guns. The torque spec from what we could find is about 440 foot pounds if you were to put a torque wrench to it. Hurricane 1 guns look to take off nuts in about 0.3 seconds and install their less powerful direction in 0.43 seconds. In the hybrid F1 era with the Hurricane 2 and custom team option sensors and lights, that looks closer to 0.26 seconds to remove and 0.36 seconds to install. That's insane. And this is how cordless would do. 1.1 seconds to remove, and we've seen some specs and lower formulas as low as 360 to 370 foot pounds, which would make for 0.6 seconds. That's not bad. And 1.05 seconds to reinstall. This has been one of our favorite impacts to use, very low vibration, easy to hold onto when maxed out, and very capable compared to other modern cordless high torques. 
Its smoothness makes it deceivingly powerful and likely why its design is used since in F2, unlike F1, they use these things one-handed, the other arm wielding a tire. But we estimate it would increase this 1.91 second pit stop time here to 3.44 seconds. As it is, 2024, so far we're seeing like 0.9 seconds removal and 0.8 seconds install on F2 pit stops. They only get six guys, so slower overall, but about the impacting time we see on our dyno. The Paoli Hurricane 2 is just hard to beat. We've had two non-F1 race teams offer to test theirs, the same model, but so far haven't gotten our schedules to line up. They use a tri-hammer air impact mechanism, not to be confused with a triple hammer like in an impact driver that hits three times per rotation. This hits once per rotation, but all three hammers hit in unison, making for a much higher delivery of kinetic energy compared to spring-driven clutches in cordless tools by generating that potential energy over 360 degrees instead of 180 degrees of rotation. And with the miles faster 15,000 RPM, that hammer speed is also much higher before hitting compounding that effect. Now this isn't an F1 wheel gun, it was loaned to us on the DL and we were given permission to cut it open, exposing the very rare type of mechanism the Hurricane 2 uses to show how it works here with our 10,000 frames per second high speed camera. Now one of the reasons this design is used is it splits the hammer transfer over three surfaces, which does two things. Greatly increases service life, which is important on a $25,000 impact wrench that goes under the knife every three to five race weekends, and dramatically reduces vibration and wasted overall tool movement, which for a handheld 3,100 foot pound capable tool you're trying to wield around as quickly as possible is an important thing, we assume. And this tool was also, like the cordless F2 model we just tested, deceivingly powerful. We're not allowed to make public what it made in max, but suffice to say that it was the most powerful air impact we've ever tested and it felt like a 400 foot pound hip shooter. We don't expect the monster pit guns of F1 to be surpassed in performance anytime soon, though there soon may be a day with F1's whole clean zero offset whatever emissions initiative that the days of nitrogen tanks, pit lane booms, and lugging these guys all around the world all rides off into the sunset in the name of quote unquote progress. But let it be known in the meantime that when it comes to speed and power, 1800's technology air power is still king. We'll be at the Suzuka track all weekend. Hope you get a chance to enjoy the race. And by that, I mean, hopefully Max requires a new engine or something. Around here, we make episodes on tools, usually every Friday. Click some buttons below if you want to see those sometimes. And thanks for watching.